Manchester and welcome to Ward 13. My name is Connie Van Houten and I will be hosting the show tonight. Uh, actually, I want to explain a little bit about some of the changes in the show. I am actually one of the West Side candidates running for election uh, for state rep. Um, and the election, of course, is on November 6th. I want to make sure to stay the date. Collectively, I am working with the other state reps on the west side, and we're working to serve the west side, going from Hookset all the way down to Bedford at the State House. There are actually eight of us who have been working together, and we're running in pairs. I am running to serve in District 45. District 45 is a little bit different from some of the other districts. It is a floatarial. And the floatarial is, um, it covers wards 10, 11, and 12. There are two representatives in each of the wards, 10, 11, and 12 already. But because of the population of the wards and the number of, of uh, constituents assigned to each state representative, there's a need for two more representatives to cover across wards 10, 11, and 12. So I will be on the ballot in wards 10, 10, 11, and 12. So I'm on three different ballots, along with my running partner, Jane Bullio. And we are both incumbents. Uh, actually, though, I'm a resident of Ward 12, and on the Ward 12 ballot, where I will be in the, in the floatarial section, you will find Ken Snow and the incumbent Bob Backus. Uh, they are part of our group as well. Willis Griffith and the, and the incumbent Patty Cornell will be on the ballot for Ward 11, and they'll be running in Ward 11 only, even though you'll see my name and Jane Bolio's name there as well. And Heidi Hamer and the incumbent Tim Smith are running in Ward 10. With the TV time that we have, uh, and collectively as a group, we've decided to, to co-host some programs that will be helpful to voters, for one, and to, to bring some contemporary issues to the table. Um, I will br be bringing a different co-host from the West Side with me each week, and hopefully we'll have some issues of current interest to present to you. So that's why you'll see some different things here today, and I do want to thank John Hopwood for allowing us to use his time and to and allow us to produce uh, these, these contemporary issue programs for you. I'm joined by my first co-host for the month of October right now. I'm going to turn it over to her to introduce herself. Uh, Heidi Hamer is the state representative candidate, first time candidate in Ward 10. Heidi, could you tell us a bit about yourself, please? I'm a lifelong resident of Ward 10, um, first time candidate, like you said, for state rep. Hopefully I can do some changes up there in Concord and for the better for Manchester for New Hampshire moving it forward and uh, I'm currently your ward clerk in Ward 10 and on election day I make sure things run smoothly and hopefully everything goes right. Um, so we have um, our alderman here Mr. Alderman Bill Berry who is also in Ward 10 and is running for sheriff. So our format is going to be this way. Um, our co-host and, and I will be talking about some people. And, and I want to mention to you that um, the group of us, the West Side Democrats, have been getting together to, to do a great deal of, thing, uh, of things. We have been providing ourselves with schedules for, for visibilities, the sign holding that you see on the corner sometimes. And one of the issues that we felt important was to bring to the table, to the microphone actually, um, some of the down ballot candidates. They are the candidates that you may not know a whole lot about, but they're critically important to us. And so Bill is one of those candidates. Um, first question, Heidi? Who are you? <laughs> I already introduced Very you. Very direct. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, my name is Bill Berry, and I, I reside in Manchester with my wife, Debbie, and our daughter, Lauren. Uh, Lauren goes to Trinity High School. She's a junior. Uh, I've lived on uh, in Manchester my whole life. I've lived in Ward 10 since uh, 2004. I've been in the Alderman. Uh, this is my third term, my fifth, fifth year right now. Uh, I've been in law enforcement for just started my 34th year in law enforcement. I had 26 years with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and the past seven and a half years with the Auburn Police Department. So you're definitely steeped in the whole concept of, of law enforcement. And I have a, uh, a burning question that I think I want to get out right off the bat. What does a sheriff do? Yeah. I, I understand police force. I understand <laughs> uh, many aspects of, of enforcement. I'm a little vague on what the sheriff's responsibilities well, are. In New Hampshire, we have 10 counties. So each county has a, uh, an elected sheriff. And underneath the sheriff, there's, uh, there's uh, uh, deputies that are appointed in office staff. And, and in Hillsborough County, we also have a dispatch center, which uh, not only dispatches for the men and women of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, but they also dispatch for some of the smaller towns uh, where they actually get its spe funding from those towns, uh, which is revenue for the county. Uh, what, we, what the job function is, and 
<clears throat> I always compare it with the U.S. Uh, Marshal Service. They're on the federal level. County sheriffs are on the county level, obviously, and pretty much do the, have the same duties. We serve civil process, which are court orders, because uh, we're a neutral party, and so we go out and we'll serve the people, and we have to uh, fill out the uh, returns to the court, so the court knows that these people were served, whether it be left at their abode, their home, uh, or given in hand uh, to them at their home or any other place uh, throughout um, Hillsborough County or the state of New Hampshire. Now, um, and we also have, um, I did mention the uh, operations, the uh, communications division, which uh, is a dispatch center. And we also have a warrants division. And for the last, for the, the last 17 years that I was at the sheriff's office, I was actually in the warrants division. And what we did was uh, pretty much look for fugitives, look for people that were wanted in, uh, in the county, in Hillsborough County. Some of them have, uh, have skipped bail. Some of them have uh, just, just not shown up for court. And sometimes they have what's called a secret indictment, which is issued by the court. And um, sometimes, unfortunately, I always joked around that it's uh, it's only a secret to us because we get it last. You know, the defendant unfortunately already knows that there's a warrant out for his arrest yeah. through his attorney, whatever, because they send him a notice and so on. Uh, and then we, when they don't show up, then we get the we get the actual warrant. So you actually have uh, you, you do arrests. You, oh yeah, you bring yeah. People we in. the uh, ironically uh, the sheriffs actually have more arrest powers uh, in the state of New Hampshire than anyone else because we can arrest throughout the state of New Hampshire. We have arrest powers throughout the state of New Hampshire, no matter which um, county you're in. Even if you're deputized in Hillsborough County, you can go throughout the state of New Hampshire right. and make arrests. Uh, state police, um, they pretty much patrol the highways and um, they have to be invited into larger cities, for example, Manchester, Nashua, uh, if they need assistance with uh, with anything that's going on. And in the past, the the some of the people that are involved with the drug unit, whether it be Manchester, Nashua, Hudson, all the small towns in Hillsborough County, would come to the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office to get deputized to give them that authority throughout the state of New Hampshire. So. In other words, so you have kind of a, like a working relationship with the local and the state, and there are lines that they don't cross, but you cover most everything? Is that what that would be? Um, yeah, or a lot of times, it's especially like, and this is my past experience, um, if we were looking for, for example, a, a, um, a person that was wanted in, in Manchester or a person that was wanted by uh, Hillsborough County, and we had a uh, good indication if they were somewhere in Manchester and we had usually we won't go uh, to, to an address unless we're we're pretty sure that they may be there or we're gonna go and question someone but we'll uh, reach out to the uh, local law enforcement agencies uh, if we're gonna be in Manchester we'll call the Manchester police and say hey we're gonna be at you know such and such an address looking for a so-and-so and sometimes they'll give us a, a heads up because sometimes they're actually want you know watching this person, so they we kind of take a step back and and we won't act on it because of the fact that they already know yeah. where this person is and they've uh, already have uh, an active investigation on them, and re and and uh, also with with the warrant that we're actually looking for this person for. So your background tells me, I was going to ask, one of the questions I think Heidi was going to ask is, is what your qualifications for this might be. But given what you've told us about your background and your years in law enforcement, your qualifications are already superior. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. But uh, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, uh, 34 years in law enforcement is, is quite a long time. Uh, I'm actually very proud of my accomplishments but one thing that i've always said is you you don't do anything yourself it's absolutely i've never ever worked on a case myself I, i've always worked on cases and i've always reached out to other law enforcement agencies or i've reached out to the community for information that uh, we're looking for and when i say law enforcement that that also includes the the jails and it also in includes the you know state prisons the uh, the county uh, corrections and so on because they have a lot of information when we're looking for someone that's wanted uh, where else better to go than to a to a uh, you know the county jail or another law enforcement agency that has had contact with these people they they know a lot more about these people than sometimes we do because and we it, it's pretty much what I've always said is like it's pretty much like doing a background check on someone uh, when you're looking for them when they're wanted um, it took me it would take me I, I would 
hesitate on even going out on the street until I get as much information about that person as I could. I want to know who they are, who their brothers and sisters are, their parents are, their friends are, their employers are, their landlords are. There's a lot of information that you have to dig up and and then you start put it's like a puzzle, it's like a big puzzle. You try to put the puzzle together and say, "All right." And then most of the time I've I don't think I've ever looked for someone and not found them. I've always been pretty pretty fortunate, but that's because of hard work, not only by myself, but uh, other people involved, you know, like other law enforcement agencies. And before we get to the next question, I just want to, <coughs> I guess, editorialize. You have such a good manner. I've known you now for maybe a half a dozen years. Such a good manner. I'm sure that you're able to network with the community in order to kind of seamlessly and, and um, maybe with a, a, a sense of, of community and people get some of the information that you need. And Well, you, you know, some of the things that I've done outside of work, my, my volunteerism in the community, uh, I coach baseball, basketball, and football uh, youth uh, for about over 35 years. And when you're dealing with, and I'll, I'll throw some names out there that uh, are very instrumental in, in youth sports in the city of Manchester, Phil Sapienza, Pat O'Neill, Mickey Hannigan, Colin Burke, a lot of these guys. So you meet, you meet a lot of these people, and you and you meet their parents and you meet you know the kids that you're coaching you, uh, you, and you'll see them and unfortunately um, I've had the opportunity and it's, it's sad but a couple of kids that have played on some of my sports teams have died from the over overdose uh, from yeah. overdoses uh, the opiate crisis and so on but uh, we have a pretty good network you know when when you're volunteering uh, I've always said once you, vol you, you volunteer once you're, you're gonna be hooked because uh, it's it's a lot of fun. You give back to the community, and um, and it just it just gives you a great feeling. And I mentioned a name earlier, Bob Back is running in Ward 12. I believe it's Bob, or it may be his co-host, uh, that always says that volunteerism logically leads to political service because you are able to 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 extend who you are, your belief in people, your belief in doing something right to political right. service. Yeah. Um, Heidi. And we just um, did a volunteer job at Parker Barney School. That's right. You were the um, <laughs> barbecue master and <laughs> I was your assistant yeah. and and, and you know it's a lot of fun that you know doing something. things like that I mean you know Connie showed up yep. and uh, Janine uh, Woodworth uh, showed up and and it's it's good people like that that you know you um, when they reached out uh, Parker Barney obviously it's it's the only school in Ward 10 but uh, it's it's a school that I you know I just think that they do such a such a great job and they're so friendly when you walk into the school you're you're always greeted whether either whether by the students or the city year folks or the staff the teachers the administration uh, Mrs. Stone is the uh, secretary uh, the receptionist at the school and you just get to know these people and anytime that they've ever reached out to me for for assistance uh, you know I'll, uh, I've always been there yeah. and you know what and that's not to say that I also don't do anything for Parkside and West High School, because I do. I mean, I think it's important. Uh, kids, you know, are, are it. You know, it's it's important for us, especially if you're in law enforcement, it's, mm -hmm. especially if you're in law enforcement, uh, to get out and, and talk to these kids. Uh, and, you know, you hope that they stay on the right track and, and, and do what's right. Uh, and a lot of them come, you know, come from broken homes. But you know what? I've always said, it, 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 I understand that, you know, uh, kids have a you know tough time because of the way they're being raised. But I always say, you know, if those kids just sit back and think about, you know, what I'm going to prove that I can do this. I can, you know, I can be, a, you know, productive. And I'm talking about kids that are now in high school and so on and so forth. You know, prove to everyone that, hey, you know what? Even though things were bad for me, I'm not going to use that as a crutch. I'm going to, I'm going to move on and I'm going to do do the right thing. Move forward. Right. Yes. Yeah, Manchester has a lot of success stories. As you know, I served on the school board for four years, mm -hmm. parallel to your aldermanic um, service, and I think we've all seen a lot of great success stories. We need to make all of them success stories, but we've right. seen a lot of good ones. Mm -hmm. So, why are you running for the elected office of sheriff? sheriff? Yes. Uh, well, you know, I don't know. You know, but yeah, I mean, it, when I first ran, I mean, I'm very, very passionate about you know the sheriff's office. Uh, I know um, how it's run and how uh, I have some ideas of how I would want it to run. I think we need more emphasis on, on working with our educators, working with our schools, our teachers, our principals, the parents, the kids, you know, to make sure that they're safe, make sure that they're protected. 
uh, and make sure they have someone out there that's guiding them. And uh, and I think that's something that you know at the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, even though we have the two largest cities uh, in the state in the same county, in addition to 29 towns, uh, I just think it's important that that we. Uh, offer some assistance to the, to the schools and the community, and as of right now, and I'm not going to, I'm not critiquing the the uh, sheriff that th that's there now, but um, we can do it. I mean, I, I'm really, really sure that we can do it. I didn't sign up this year to run. I uh, I was actually I received phone calls from people on in, from the inside of the sheriff's office that were disappointed that I didn't sign up. And then I received phone calls from, you know, the Democratic Party saying, hey, would you be interested? And uh, so there was a lot of phone calls being made. And uh, in the last week of the uh, prior to the primary, uh, I decided, you know what, let's give it a shot and uh, let's see what's out there and, and go on. But in one of the things that we, in one, you know, one thing that I really want to stress with not only, not only um, you know, sheriff's office, you know, running for sheriff, but also running for county attorney, You've got two law enforcement positions, you know, and people need to, you know, be just be uh, 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 aware of the fact that you know it is a law enforcement position. So it's not, you know, it's not Republican, Democrat, Independent. It's it's work for everyone. You know, that our our, our job is to work for everyone in the in the uh, county, in the state of New Hampshire. It's not just the county because we, we you know we do work with with agencies throughout the state of New Hampshire. So. It's really important that people realize that when you're voting uh, for Hillsborough County Sheriff, you don't have to go down party lines. And I've been frustrated for the, of the fact that, unfortunately, a lot of Democrats don't follow that suit. They don't go all the way down the bottom of the ticket. And Connie made reference that, you know, the county offices are down uh, past the legislat le legislators. Um, so people lose interest when they start with the governor and Congress and uh, state Senate, and they go down to the legislatures and the uh, county offices. Uh, they lose interest, and unfortunately, you know, we lose out on it as candidates. And it's frustrating to us because we work really, really hard, yes, and we campaign can. really hard to to get uh, to that point. And I'm just hoping that you know the message gets out there. I have talked to quite a few people, and and I'm and I continue uh, to try to get the message out there. I don't have a boatload of money to. Uh, that, and I'll tell you, if you really, really honestly wanted to run a, a, a perfect campaign in Hillsborough County, I mean, it's a lot bigger than running for Congress, the population-wise and the area-wise. Um, you'd need, you know, you know, God, about $100,000 to get the message out. And you're just not going to do it. You're just not going to raise that type of money because uh, people are more interested in, in, you know, the governor's races than the... Um, uh, Congress and Senate when they, when the Senates are up and uh, and then uh, state Senate and so on you know and that's one of the reasons why the West Side <coughs> group has decided to showcase uh, right. some of you fine candidates who are indeed in that bottom of the ballot position but um, with a little sp exposure could easily be uh, brought to light for people because we know you do important tasks when we look at what yeah. happens in the county yeah. so Bill I know um, as a police officer you did some great work as a detective and um, could you tell us briefly about that yeah. and well, I, what happened and yeah I, I worked on I've worked on quite a few cases uh, ironically after I retired from the sheriff's office in 2011 I went over to work for Auburn police part-time and I thought it was going to be part-time was like a few few days here and there and it, well the chief called me in his office and uh, I retired. I started there in June of 2011, June 14th, and then July of uh, 2011, a few weeks after I started, I was asked to work on a uh, cold case murder uh, that happened in 2001. So it was already a 10-year-old case. And George Joden was, Joden was the victim and the, his brother had called, found out that I was working in Auburn and asked the chief if I could, uh, if he could assign me to work on that and together with Bob Friedis. And again, this is a good, exactly what I was saying. You, you're not going to solve something yourself. You, you're going to need uh, help. And Bobby Friedis, uh, who retired from the Manchester Police Department, was in, was uh, working up at the Code Case Unit in Concord. So he and I 
got together and we worked really, really hard on this case and we were able to find the person that was responsible for the murder and we ended up, he ended up getting arrested and uh, we arrested him in uh, two, early 2012 and uh, he uh, pled guilty and is spending 30 years uh, to life in uh, state prison. So that was a good case. Another case that I worked on was um, that I got rec recommendation, uh, recognized actually, by Robert Mueller, who was the d director of the FBI back in 2011. Uh, I received a special badge from the FBI that they only give out to someone that was involved uh, with apprehending one of their the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives. So I was involved with that case, and I got that special badge with a nice uh, proclamation from uh, from the director himself, which is which I'm really really proud of. And now Robert Mueller has been actually more famous now than he was back in 2011 yeah. because <laughs> of the Trump investigation. Uh, though, so we're running into the break yeah. time, so we'll give you one last question before we say goodbye to you. Okay. You, do you have any contact information for sheriff? Well, yeah, I, I have a you know uh, Bill Berry for sheriff on uh, on Facebook, and if anyone ever wants to get a hold of me, they can call me at home at six zero three six two seven seven one eight nine. And I believe that your information is also on the Manchester City website, yes, as you are an alderman for uh, mm -hmm. for Ward 10 as well. Yes. Uh, we're going to be taking a break in a few minutes. I just want to remind people mm -hmm. that uh, our host, our guest rather, right now is Bill Berry for sheriff. He's running for county sheriff in Hillsborough. We will be having, in the second part of our show, we'll be having the uh, candidate for county attorney, which is that tandem position that you were talking mm -hmm. about for law enforcement. Uh, as we go to break, I want to remind people that I sit here representing uh, the West Side state representatives, who are, or should, I should say candidates for state representative, and uh, we are bringing these kinds of people to the table for you so that you can have an opportunity to judge for yourself the fine caliber of people that you may not have gotten to know in any other circumstance. Uh, Bill, thank you so much thank for being you. with us. We wish you well in your, in your election and hope to see you again very soon, either here or at the polls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And we are back. You are viewing Ward 13. I'm Connie Van Houten, your host, and I'm with my co-host to my left is Heidi Hamer. Heidi is also a candidate for state representative as well. Uh, as we said earlier when we had Bill Berry here, uh, candidate for sheriff, we're going to hook up the two people that are primary with law enforcement for the Hillsborough County, uh, Hillsborough County area. Uh, so with us today, we have Michael Conlon. My, I'll let Michael introduce himself in a moment. Heidi, we'll, we'll throw that over to him in a moment. But uh, very briefly, Michael is the candidate, the Democratic candidate for Hillsborough County attorney. Heidi? So who are you and where have you been and what are you doing? And <laughs> Sure. Uh, thank you for having me, Connie yes. and Heidi. Uh, and it's great to be uh, here in Manchester talking to the, the people of Manchester and, and New Hampshire in generally. Um, uh, my name is Michael Conlon. I'm the Democratic candidate for county attorney. Um, I'm a lifelong New England resident. Uh, I was born in Connecticut. Uh, then we moved uh, quickly to Cape Cod in Massachusetts for a year. Um, and then I ended up growing up and going to uh, school in, in Vermont uh, in a small town called Starksboro. Um, and then uh, wanted to see more uh, and get more involved with um, society as you know the internet was starting to bloom at the end of the 90s and uh, my interest in technology um, was uh, you know, sending me to, to college. I ended up going to Northeastern in Boston and lived in Boston for over 15 years um, and you know surrounding towns moving around uh, often. Um, and then uh, met my wife in law school and uh, at Suffolk Law, working uh, full time and putting myself through law school at night. Um, and then we moved to, to uh, New Hampshire to settle down where my wife uh, had started a business right out of law school. Um, and we've been here ever since. Uh, I live in Goffstown. Uh, it's a great little town just neighboring Manchester. Um, and you know we really love the proximity uh, that uh, Goffstown provides um, between you know Boston, uh, Manchester itself, uh, Vermont, and other places. Um, and the, you know um, running for county attorney because um, uh, you know just was very involved in my my, my town and my community um, as a member of the planning board very quickly uh, to get involved and try to help out and as a, a volunteer there. Uh, to see what I can do to help improve the town and, and make a contribution there. Uh, and that led to me to uh, have an understanding of, uh, uh, of some of the issues that were facing the state and the town um, and support some of our great state rep candidates, such as yourselves, that we have in Goffstown as well. Um, and, you know, working through, working through um, the, uh, the needs of, of the ballot, as, as Bill was saying earlier, you know, uh, the, the full uh, down ballot candidates and things of that nature, um, coordinating with uh, the, the folks in the Democratic Party, you know, just saw the opportunity to step up and contribute even further by running for county attorney, uh, and that's why I'm here today. And Michael, um, again, I'll ask you something that I asked Bill, and that's uh, partially a personal interest of mine rather than um, a knowledge base that I have. What, what is the county attorney? What do you do? What is your function? Sure. Yeah, the county attorney's powers are, are constitutional uh, and uh, derive, you know, primarily from the attorney general uh, and the attorney general's charge as the um, chief prosecutor um, and contributing to the uh, uh, criminal justice um, program there um, and ensuring that um, the, the laws and crimes against the uh, state are, are prosecuted appropriately. Uh, and so that violators face justice. Um, the county attorney has powers delegated from the attorney general to focus on felonies uh, that other than murder. So we're talking about sexual assaults and armed robberies and, and crimes like that um, that are in our community um, and ensuring that the uh, victims get support uh, in their contribution to helping justice be served there and that the perpetrators are uh, face justice ultimately. So as a head of law enforcement and the chief prosecutor uh, in, with that sort of um, subject matter jurisdiction, uh, you know, they are charged with those, um, charged under the law to pursue those um, issues and uh, um, enforce those laws. 
And do you oversee staff that would also go into the courtroom as well? Absolutely. So, so the, the, the county attorney has delegated authority from the attorney general and then also has the uh, power to delegate the county attorney's powers to assistant county attorneys. Um, and there's two different offices, uh, Hillsborough North and Hillsborough South, as they're referred to, uh, where there's teams of uh, prosecutors that support the county attorney's office in prosecuting those crimes um, and also providing uh, witness and victim service support. Um, for folks that are involved in the criminal justice system, you know, by no, by no uh, action or desire of their own, um, just by, by as bystanders or victims. Um, so ensuring that those folks have the support and protection that they need so that justice can be served and that their very valuable uh, testimony can, and evidence can make, uh, be contributed towards uh, the prosecution of the perpetrators. And again, I, I just have to say, given the importance and the impact of what you do, um, I hope that voters are listening and watching this so that they, along with me, can learn a little bit more about the, the functions of these people mm -hmm. who are, we call them down ballot, meaning that they're not at the top of the ballot, they end up at the bottom of the ballot. But they are so critically important to us. Absolutely. You know, a lot of our, you know, certainly my interest in politics didn't start with um, uh, prosecution you know you you when you read the news and you you know kind of get involved in your community the uh, unless you are involved uh, in a, you know a, a crime or have been victimized yourself you know typically you don't have a lot of knowledge of prosecution other than maybe what you see on on TV you know it's a very popular um, uh, source of, of media and fictional yeah. stories but um, you know Folks think think more about the executive, the chief executives, or or the legislature. You know, and the, they think about what laws they'd want to change, and that really gets you focused on the legislature and how you would change things for the future. But, um, you know, a, a critical function of our justice system and our political process is also the execution of laws today and how those laws are enforced. Um, and I think we've started to see that happen more often. Um, you know, in uh, some of our national conversations about. Uh, law enforcement and ensuring that justice is served um, in all corners uh, of the issues. So with all these small offices, you, you're, you would be full-time, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a full-time position full -time for two position. years. Probably more than yep. full-time yeah. given, yeah. 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 I mean, given yeah. the scope of I, what you do. You know, um, I don't come to the table with a strong prosecutorial or law enforcement background. You know, typically for the county attorney, from, from what I understand, is you come from one or two angles, which is either uh, prosecutorial or, or political. Uh, and certainly, you know, my involvement with the party and, and trying to help support other candidates um, and, uh, you know, running for office and things of that nature just to, to help foster the change and bring about, um, you know, just as I was saying before with the focus on the legislative part, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, so that's kind of the angle that I'm coming from into this office. You know, I'll be the first to say that it's it was you know a little um, maybe disappointing that there wasn't someone with a strong prosecutorial background that stepped up and said yes, I'm going to you know challenge the incumbent because I you know see the issues that are facing the current county attorney's office and and I know that I can you know step in and make some change with the experience that I have as prosecutor. Um, you know, so that didn't really happen. Uh, but you know, when I became aware that there was this this vacancy for the Democratic Party in the county attorney's office in Hillsborough, um, you know, I looked into the issues. I discussed it with my wife, who's also an attorney, um, and you know, um, it just became apparent that there was a real opportunity for me to step up and make another contribution, which I've been doing, you know, for most of my life, uh, most of my uh, certainly most of my adult life. I've got, got involved in. Um, activism and, and the issues at a very early age. Um, and so that's, that's really what brought me here today is that, you know, I feel like that I'm, I'm qualified for the role, uh, which, you know, isn't necessarily requiring any prosecutorial back experience, but, you know, really has an issue with, with leadership and management that, um, that I have experience dealing with, uh, jumping into new situations where I don't have the subject matter expertise on that specific role. Um, and making, you know, getting, the, getting ramped up to uh, understand what is needed of me um, and using the, the skills and the relationships that I have to, to make that contribution and, and do well. Um, 
multiple times in my career, um, I always see myself as more of a jack of all trades, but certainly when you talk about careers of attorneys, you know, you see people, you know, focus and specialize and go deeper down into the unique niche of their specific practice area. Um, and, you know, for me, it's been a little more of a, 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 I've been blessed with the opportunity to make different contributions in different subject matter areas. And, um, and my resume so far has been a record of success and increasing that, that responsibility so that I can make different contributions around. And, you know, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to the opportunity to make that contribution to the Hillsborough County Attorney's Office. What do you want to say? Yeah, you, you alluded to some of the issues um, that you would like to address as county attorney. Absolutely. Would you like to address some of those at this time? You know, the three main um, issues that I'm focusing on in this, in this campaign, and, and, and not just for the purpose of campaign, but for the purpose of bringing visibility to the county attorney's office as well, is, is first and foremost leadership, but also uh, the opioid uh, crisis and also um, domestic violence. And I think those are, are very important issues that the county attorney's office is dealing with and has been dealing with um, and could do a better job at dealing with them, honestly. And I don't mean from a prosecutorial standpoint, but I mean primarily from a leadership standpoint. Um, and I think we saw, you know, that's something that I've been saying on this campaign. As I mentioned, when, when I first looked into the office, because I wasn't, you know, particularly familiar with the county attorney's office, um, but when I was, you know, entering this uh, this race, but when I looked into it, you know, I, I saw it quickly that um, there was an opportunity for um, better leadership to step into the office to make a stronger contribution to our community. I think, um, as elected officials, we have a responsibility to engage with our community uh, and to bring transparency to the duties of the office that we've been elected to. Um, you know, and the only real uh, transparency that we can see from the current county attorney's office is uh, during county commission meetings. And um, unfortunately, there's there doesn't seem to be a lot of um, you know re re sort of reporting or or um, you know voluntarily um, uh, presenting information to the public the way that I would like to see. Um, and I mean that by participation as well. So. Um, our, our state and our, our cities, specifically Manchester and Nashua, have responded to the opioid epidemic by forming different task forces and commissions, specifically the Governor's Commission, which meets in Bow, um, and has a long list of, um, you know, high stakes um, um, leaders that are involved in that. Uh, and then in Manchester and Nashua, we have different uh, task forces that are m more local, you know, for the specific needs of those cities. And uh, as county attorney, you know, I think that the office that is the highest law enforcement, uh, the chief of law enforcement, let's say, and the, um, the head of prosecution, you know, for certain felonies, which covers, um, you know, uh, much of the opioid epidemic, um, you know, really should have a representation at that table and really should be um, conversing with the community and bringing transparency and, and showing that those resources in that office is available to support folks that have that are trying to find the way forward on those issues. Um, I'm not saying that I have the solution to the opioid epidemic, but I think that the county attorney's office, it, you know, will make you should be making a contribution. Um, to that, those solutions. And, and, and when I first joined the, uh, the race, one of the things that I was talking about uh, right off the bat was uh, the class action lawsuits against the opioid manufacturers. Yeah. Um, now, the Hillsborough County Attorney, I'm sorry, the Hillsborough County Commissioners uh, have since voted to uh, join on to a class action lawsuit against the opioid manufacturers. And I believe there's only two other counties out of 10 in the state that have not, one decided against and the North Country, uh, Coos County, um, Coos County, sorry, has, um, has not made a decision yet. Um, but, you know, I think that when I was looking at the meeting minutes, because I went back and looked at the meeting minutes for the county commissioners in Hillsborough, and I noticed that I believe it was one of the May, uh, there's two meetings in May, and one of those meetings, um, when one of the, they had a request for proposals out to get information about you know, the different um, lawsuits that are in place to see which one they should join. Um, and when I looked at one of the presentations from one of those attorneys that um, happened in May, um, I, know, I couldn't help but notice that the current county attorney, Dennis Hogan, was not present at that meeting. And I really feel that um, it's, 
the the county commissioners should understandably look to the county attorney for guidance and subject matter expertise on these types of issues and to simply go by the minutes or to you know remove yourself from that process um, and and I'm not sure exactly why he wasn't there um, you know is unfortunate and I think that's a it, it undermines his ability to contribute to that process and to contribute to the county so that we're making the right decision um, and you know I would want to make sure that we attend those meetings that um, that you know, you're bringing that subject matter expertise as a licensed attorney to the table and you can help navigate some of the pros and cons um, of those proposals and help make sure that we're making the right decisions so that we can bring better resources to the to the state to the county um, you know we have a 98 million dollar budget in the county uh, offices 98 million my 98 goodness million million. I don't remember voting on that but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you vote on it uh, twice a year when you pay your property taxes you know true it's that's a, very true it's a line item in there whether you like it or not and um, uh, the the appropriateness of the decisions for things like that, when you're talking about class action lawsuits, which could potentially bring millions of dollars um, to the county, uh, you know, that can have a real impact on folks' tax bill. Uh, and, you know, I think... Not to mention the resources to fight the opioid. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a real thing that we're struggling with right now. We just got... Um, uh, I heard that there was a, a multi-million dollar, you know, federal award that's going to be bringing resources to the state, but that's only going to last two years. And the question is, what's going to happen after those two years? Are we going to abandon the programs and the people that we're supporting at that time, or are we going to find a new way forward? And whatever we can do to bring those resources to the table to make sure that folks get the support that they need for those issues, um, you know, to the extent that the county attorney's office can contribute to that. And, uh, you know, I think that was a real opportunity there that, um, and we'll see how that shakes out. Um, you know, but, you know, that's, that's, those are the kinds of things that I'd like to, um, you know, bring to the participation of me as county attorney. And I think it starts with going to those meetings and showing up to the community and saying, I'm here. Um, I'm your elected official. I'm here to help. And whatever I can do, I will do. Um, and, you know, and I'm just not seeing that message coming from the current county attorney's office. And I, I think that um, when you talk about leadership and you talk about opioids, you know, there's an easy way forward. And it's and, and, and just you got to show up first, um, you know, and, and, you know, be your authentic self and and try to do what you can. You know, Michael, I did some research because I had not met you before. Part of it was to look at some union leader articles. And then mm -hmm. I went to the ultimate um, source of research. I checked out your Facebook pages. Oh, uh, you. <laughs> and yeah, Conlin4NH, uh, Facebook.com slash Conlin, uh, number four, and then NH. That's my main website. Um, as Bill was saying, you know, the, the, the down-ballot county offices don't get a lot of um, uh, yeah. love from folks when they have find then they find ways in, you know to contribute five ten twenty five dollars from their wallet um, you know you're really thinking about folks like yourself that are you know trying to get into Concord and try to change the laws for tomorrow or or our lovely uh, candidate for Congress Chris Pappas uh, or Molly Kelly for governor you know because those are the we see those as a bigger splash or a bigger use of our money um, and you know every every uh, campaign contribution is is very valuable to the, the folks that are making it um, so um, you know the it's, it's, you know, when you're trying to budget for a campaign, and this is my first campaign <clears throat> as a, uh, as a uh, partisan political candidate. Um, so it's, uh, you know, you want to use the money, the resource that you have judiciously. Again, we're talking about budgeting. It just, sure. just sounds like uh, what I was just talking about there. But um, so, yeah, Facebook.com slash Conlin4NH is my primary website where I'm trying to, to communicate and bring uh, transparency to the issue. And it's an easy place to engage with folks and share events, and it's been really useful so far. And it's an, an inexpensive way of reaching out to people. It's something exactly. that, a platform that I think a lot of people do understand. Yeah. Um, as I said, it, it's probably not my best research, and, and you probably don't know this about me that I'm an English teacher, English professor. Excellent. Teaching research is one of my things. So, Thank you. Um, but going here, uh, I did find a quote that I would really like to, to bring out. Sure. This was on your Facebook page, mm -hmm. and it struck me, and I will read it, and hopefully I'll do justice to it as I read it. I am quoting from uh, Michael Conlon's Facebook page. Everyone is fighting a battle of some kind, and we all deserve dignity along the way to find hope for tomorrow. You said that in reference to your older brother. Yeah. Would you care to tell us a little bit about why you put that out there? And I don't want to violate any confidentiality, but it was sure. such a touching tribute that I'd like to explore yeah. it. Yeah, my brother is, I have an older brother, uh, my only sibling. Um, and, um, 
right now he was um, he's an Air Force veteran uh, my I come from a family of veterans um, my my grandfather uh, served in World War II um, and his brother uh, was a paratrooper in Italy and didn't come back from the war um, and my father was a, is a Vietnam veteran who served in Alaska in the Air Force uh, station there um, and so my brother is also as I mentioned an Air Force veteran and when he came back from service um, I you know he came back with a cane um, and you know uh, he's always been a, a, a quiet guy um, whereas I was a little more of the spokesman for the two of us growing up and uh, surprise no so he has to be one of them right <laughs> yeah um, you know and uh, you know it turns out that he uh, for whatever reason came down with multiple sclerosis so he's been fighting that battle um, you know since he was um, in his mid-twenties and it was really hard for him to let go of his bicycle um, and right now, uh, why, why I posted that on my Facebook is because, you know, our country right now, this is a little outside of the county attorney's box, but um, uh, I think it's super incredibly important, um, you know, not only for my family, but for virtually every family that I've interacted with, and, and that's, you know, health care. Um, and um, right now my brother is in Mexico um, with my mom and he's getting treatment for his multiple sclerosis with a, a special stem cell uh, procedure that he wasn't qualified for here in the States. Um, and, you know, um, I just felt that, um, you know, a as folks try to work on, a I think everyone is really dealing with some kind of, you know, issue or, 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 or problem that, you know, they're either forced to wear on their sleeve um, or or hide, you know, from the public, just to try to overcome and, and not um, uh, not burden everybody with with their problems. You know, we like to uh, try to overcome things like that. So, uh, you know, um, while folks, my brother is fortunate in that, you know, he has the support of a loving wife um, and and you know, uh, our parents and and me uh, distantly here as I run for office. Um, you know, but I think that while folks are dealing with those issues that, it, you know, um, we need to really um, support, uh, you know, focus on the, the humanity and the dignity that, that um, it, it, folks can, can lay vulnerable while they um, either disclose and talk about the issues or, and find the strength to go public with some of that stuff um, and, and try to bring awareness to things like that. So. For, for me, it would just really emphasize a lot of the things that uh, I'm hearing, not necessarily on my campaign, but on others uh, throughout the state and, and uh, further up the ticket, perhaps. Um, you know, uh, and in healthcare, I think, as folks try to either, you know, pay for it with a GoFundMe or, or whatever that they're brought to do, that, you know, we need to really show some respect and, and, and empathy to those that are dealing with those issues and those struggles to not only to help them overcome it, but to give them respect along the way. And I brought up the quote, one, of, I found it a touching quote, but two, I think it, uh, again, I didn't know you, and as soon as I read that quote, I felt that I did know you. Mm -hmm. I felt to know, I felt I knew a little bit about your heart and soul and your passion, and um, Thank you. sometimes when we see people as politicians and we see little sound bites and we see signs and such, we don't look at the heart of people, and uh, I, I was just very touched by that, and I, I'm sure your brother is a very lucky man to have you in his life. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. You're such a caring gentleman. <laughs> and um, what a couple accomplishments or events can you point to that would show viewers a bit about you who care for your character, your yeah, beliefs? Sure, sure. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, the, the one thing I think that really jumps out to me from that question is, um, is shortly after I graduated from college uh, from Northeastern as the first in my family to go to college. My, my father really uh, ingrained it in me at an early age that I, I, I was going to college. He, he um, took some college courses but never graduated and he always felt that not having that sort of piece, that, as he called it, that piece of paper uh, to show that he was certified for whatever position he was going for that that held him back, so he didn't really want that to happen to me. So at an early age, he really pushed me to go to college. And after I graduated, I went to Northeastern for computer science, which was an amazing school, an amazing opportunity. Um, I was in college in the late 90s, from 98 to 03. It's a five-year program uh, with uh, various internships. Um, when I graduated in 03, um, it was kind of an odd time to be a to try to be a software developer um, if you weren't going to try to be inventive at the same time and create your own 
you know, job or a career to go forward. Um, so um, when I was I was looking for work and um, I ended up um, I, my first job out of college was actually at the Italian Home for Children uh, in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, and just outside, which is uh, uh, one of Boston's boroughs. And the Italian Home for Children is a short-term and long-term residential center for abused and neglected children. Um, and I worked there for a year before I ended up be being recruited to a, a software position at a large company. And uh, you know that that role really um, gave me a lot of skills that I didn't even know that I was going to need later and really helped me understand that there's there's so much more happening in this world other than the narrow focus of you know your career as a young student who just graduated college thinking that about you know the the rest of your life before you and, and the great things you can do over the next 40 years with your job to 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 be taken in a different direction and to be you know to try to console a child who's banging his head against a concrete wall because he's suicidal, because he thinks that he doesn't want to live anymore, because his, you know, his, something's happened in his life. His parent, he doesn't feel like that he has the love and support of his parents. His father maybe not be in the picture, or his mother not be in the picture. Um, you know, I, I think that every home is a little broken, and um, it, and it's up to us to come together to share the pieces that we have that we've. Uh, accumulated in our life to to help connect those puzzles together for each other and that really becomes the fabric of the community that we have um, so so that experience really really introduced me to that I developed a lot of great relationships and folks that I'm still in touch with today and even after I I, I remember giving my notice which was right after my annual review um, you know and I, I was like thank you for your feedback but I need to tell you something too um, I came back to the campus thereafter, shortly thereafter, for one of um, for a birthday party uh, for one of the kids that was staying there. Perfect. Um, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. Michael, I want to thank you for joining us. We're actually oh. running out of time. Our oh. time goes very, very quickly when Sorry we're here. Sorry to hear that. I have so um, much more to say. Michael Conlon, <laughs> running for a county attorney. I want to thank my go uh, my co-host, uh, Heidi Hamer, who's running for state representative in, in Ward 10. Uh, and I also want to thank the um, the West Side group, the, uh, the group of us running for state representatives who have taken it upon ourselves to bring issues to the table that might not always be brought to the table. Uh, that includes in Ward 10, uh, Heidi Hamer and Tim, and Tim Smith, in Ward 11, Patty Cornell and Willis Griffith, in Ward 12, Bob Backus and Ken Snow, and the companion with whom I'm writing, um, Jane Bolio. I'm not sure exactly what we'll see for next week, but count on us to bring the best show to forward that we can. I'll have a different different co-host, and we'll try to make sure that we bring something that Manchester needs to, wants to know, and maybe have a little bit of entertainment as we go along. I, I sincerely thank both um, Mr. Conlon, uh, I should say Michael Conlon, so that you get the full name, and Bill Berry for taking the time out to explain to us some positions that we don't hear a lot about, and I sincerely hope that Manchester voters and Hillsborough County voters as well go to the polls, think about these positions, and think about those people that we want to do these important jobs for us. Uh, thank you, Manchester. Have a great evening. Thank you.